One of the most extraordinary and thrilling days of LV County Championship cricket ended at Taunton with Somerset producing a stunning one-wicket win over Warwickshire to crack the race for the title right open. It was a memorable day in particular for Craig Keyswetter and Keith Barker. Warwickshire began the final day as massive favourites, resuming on 66 for three, 212 runs ahead after they just failed to enforce the follow-on. They lost Varon Chopra in the day's fourth over to set the trend. Tim Ambrose fell in the next over, pulling Alfonso Thomas to Max Waller. Ricky Clark flicked Jamal Hussain but found Alex Barrow at mid-wicket. Chris Wokes was LBW to the on-fire Hussain, for whom that was wicket number four in the innings. And Barker was beaten for pace by Thomas and offered Keyswetter a simple catch behind to leave Warwickshire on 87 for eight. Jitan Patel wanted a bit more to bowl at than the current lead of 233, and so he had a swish. He pulled Hussain for a six as yet again Warwickshire seemed set to take a game away from an opposition just when it was needed. But this time, Patel cut a grimacing Thomas to James Hildreth at third man. And Hussein trapped Chris Wright in front to finish with figures of 5 for 48, as Warwickshire were all out for 124 in the 38th over, their last seven wickets falling for just 50. So that set Somerset 271 runs to win in 78 overs, and that soon looked well beyond them when Barrow was out to the fifth ball, nicking a lifter from Wokes to Darren Maddy, who'd been left stranded on 17 in his side sudden collapse. Aral Sapaya then had his stumps rearranged by Barker to go for a couple, and straight after lunch, Hildreth gloved a pull off Wokes behind to leave Somerset reeling on 15 for three. Game over? Many would have thought so, but not Keyswetter, who came out and drove his first ball to the fence. He and Nick Compton, a man who never knows when he's beaten, then just started to show signs that this game was not quite over yet, although at this stage there did appear to be only one winner. Warwickshire must have been sensing a big gap at the top of the table. But Keyswetter was in explosive form and it wasn't long before he was finding his range, here sweeping Patel for a six on his way to a 50 from 52 balls. This pair ensured that no further wickets were lost before T, and in doing so, they took the total well into three figures. This last day pitch was not giving the visiting attack as much help as many were anticipating, as the runs were now being knocked off with some ease. Indeed, for the first time in the entire match, the pressure began to be put back on Warwickshire, as Keyswetter decided that post-T, it was time to go on the attack. Patel had taken 7 for 75 in the first innings, but Keyswetter now treated him as if he was bowling on a beach. He smashed three sixes and over to race to a quite brilliant 100, which had come off 123 balls, and innings including 10 fours and four maximums. Compton admired from the other end, but played yet another vital innings for his team, recording a 50 for the 10th time in 15 championship innings this summer. This one had occupied 143 deliveries. The target was now down to 100. Somerset had 26 and a half overs to get 90 when Compton was finally out for the first time in this match, surprisingly nicking Wokes behind on 52. He'd been at the crease for seven hours in total in the game. Keyswetter's reaction to losing his partner was to attack some more. He followed a four off Patel with another six, before planting right over the ropes as well. Thanks to Keyswetter's utter brilliance, time was not now going to be an issue. So Barker was brought back on and gave his side the slimmest of hopes by having Joss Butler taken by Chopra at 236 for five. Just 35 were needed and that target was brought down to only 12 as Keyswetter smashed his seventh six. He can't have ever played better than this. It was a shame for him that he couldn't take his side home, but on an outstanding 152 made off 170 balls, he pulled Barker to Wokes and suddenly the game changed rather dramatically. Eight were wanted when Barker struck for the fourth time by having Craig Mesheda held by Chopra. And we had a game on when Barker made it five for the fifth time this season as Thomas went next ball, Clark with the catch this time. Peter Trigo and Waller added six more as the tension became unbearable and then incredibly Waller edged Barker to Chopra. Somerset had lost four wickets, all to Barker, for ten runs. 
So the last pair were in, still requiring two. Barker found Hussein's edge, but the ball fell short of the slips this time. Hussein survived the final five balls of the over and to the first of the next, Trigo clipped Patel for the winning runs. What an extraordinary game it was as Somerset ended on 273 for nine to win by one wicket. Barker ended with career best figures of six for 40. He didn't deserve to be on the losing team, but then neither did Keyswetter. Somerset took 21 points to Warwickshire's eight and that opens the title race right up. The lead at the top is just a point with Somerset now only eight behind. Indeed, just 24 points now separate the top five.